So how old is your jet ski trailer? How many miles have you dragged it up and down the road? How often do you check the bearings? Have you ever changed the bearings? It might be about that time. Hey everybody, this is Captain Frank with the Ship's Log. We are back again in the garage today, going to do a little bit of maintenance. Uh, hey, it's, it's early February. Spring is coming. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited. Can't wait to get back on the ski, do some trips, explore some new areas, and just have some fun. Uh, I know that most of us, we're all thinking about getting our skis back in shape, making sure they're ready to go because we want to make sure that they are good to go as soon as we're ready to hit the water. But what about the trailer? How long has it been since you've checked your trailer bearings? How long has it been since you've changed your trailer bearings? If you're at all like me, you go a lot of places. Okay, my trailer for my ski is now three and a half years old. I've gone South Florida, I've gone all the way up to New York, a lot of other places in between. I do keep a good eye on my bearings, but I have yet to change them. Today, I'm going to swap those bearings out, make sure that they are good to go for at least another few years, because the last thing I want is to have a failure in my bearings when I'm trying to go out and have fun. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. All right, so first let's talk about all of the tools I'm going to use in order to do this. If you already regularly work on your vehicle, car, boat, whatever, you probably already have a lot of these. Uh, you don't necessarily need all of these, but these are the ones that I'm going to use. Uh, first of all, a box of rags, because it's going to get messy. There's going to be a lot of grease, and you're going to need something to wipe all that grease up. So a box of rags, uh, some type of a solvent, so that you can actually clean the parts off. I'm going to be using a brake cleaner, uh, but some people use kerosene, some people use other solvents, but just make sure that whatever you do use, that you, you do dispose of it properly. I do have to jack the trailer up, of course, so here's my bottle jack that I'm going to use. I am going to be safe and put it on a jack stand. Keep in mind, when you use a hydraulic jack, they do go down slowly over time, so you want to be safe. Use a pair of jack, or use a single jack stand, pair of jack stands, whatever. I also have a kit. Uh, this is used for actually uh, installing uh, uh, bearing races. It's a bearing race and seal driver, um, and it's it's got different sizes for different types of bearings. So obviously you can use it on all types of things that have bearings, um, but this makes putting the uh, race in and the seal in way easier than trying to do that in, in some other method. So. Gloves, again, it's gonna be messy, having gloves for your hands. Just a, a block of wood uh, to help to, to put my caps back on. Uh, at least one hammer. I'll probably use this one. I don't know if I will need this one. Um, especially if I have the black of, block of wood, I probably don't need this, but a hammer. Right here, we have a punch that I'll be using to get the races out of the wheels. Screwdriver, uh, needle nose pliers, channel lock pliers, of course I already mentioned the hammer, a brush that will be used for cleaning uh, some of the parts off. Obviously you're going to have to have grease and a grease gun. I've got two tubes of grease, one is already in the gun here. Uh, make sure that when you get your grease, you use marine grease. You don't want to use regular grease because regular grease does not have the resistance to water that marine grease does. So make sure you get a good quality marine grease um, for the wheel bearings in your trailer. Of course, you're gonna have to have the replacement bearings and the bearing seals uh, that you're gonna put in. Um, that's about it. So if you've got all that stuff, the only thing that I actually purchased for this job was the race and seal uh, kit. Um, I remember trying to do this the last time 
without a kit and this just makes it so easier. I got this on Amazon uh, and uh, it wasn't that expensive. I think it was less than $30. So uh, I will put a link in the description uh, down to, to where I got that. So, But that's about it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put chocks on the wheels. By the way, chocks is one thing you don't see here, but uh, they're actually down by the trailer. But we're going to put the chocks on the opposite wheel of the one that we're working on. So as we jock, jack up the side that we're working on, we can ensure that the trailer doesn't roll back and forth in either direction. So we're going to put those chocks on there. We're going to get the trailer jacked up and then we'll get started. All right, we're going to get the trailer jacked up. We do have the chocks on the opposite wheel there. should be high enough. Maybe another couple of pumps just to get the jack stand underneath there. There we go. Okay. This right here is just a rubber seal that keeps everything, hopefully, keeps everything nice and dry. So take that off. Uh, and we're gonna take this little cap off here. Let's see if the channel locks will do that for us. Yep, nice and easy. All right. Now this is where things start to get a little messy. As you see, we got a lot of grease in there, which is exactly what we want, of course. But uh, yeah, we gotta clean that up. Now, one thing that you can do is you can check to see you know, whether your bearings really were getting worn. So two things that you can do to check this. Number one is you can grab a tire and you can see if there's any play. There's not much. So this tire is actually not much play at all. So that's good. Also, you can spin it. And listen, if you hear grinding or rubbing, then yeah, your bearings are getting bad. This one actually doesn't sound that bad. And obviously it's spinning freely. But again, three and a half years old, we're gonna go ahead and swap those out anyway. Um, I actually have a feeling, one reason why I'm doing, why I'm doing this, I do have a feeling the bearings on the other side aren't so lucky. Uh, we'll find that out when we get into them. But I think the seal on uh, the, the wheel on the other side probably failed and I think those bearings have, have gotten wet. So, uh, but anyway, but we're gonna go ahead and swap this out and see what we get. We'll just get some of this grease off so we can see what we're doing here. So there's a cotter pin that we need to first take out. It's right here. And it's we gotta straighten it out somewhat. Sorry, bring my I did not Okay, so I use this to see if we can. There we go.
Now, by the way, when you get your kit for replacing your, you get your, your, your kit that has your seals, your bearings, whatever, it also should have a new cotter pin. Um, you can reuse the old one. You can go through the process of straightening it up and putting it back in there, and you can do that. But it's always a good idea to replace the cotter pin as well. There we go. So, got the cotter pin out. Now we can take that nut off. Now keep in mind, this nut, of course, it holds everything in place, but the objective is not to have this nut extremely tight. Uh, it's not, hey, crank down on it, make it as tight as you can to hold the wheel on. Um, the nut goes on there. The cotter pin makes sure that the nut doesn't come back off. That's what makes sure that everything holds together. Now, underneath the nut, there's also a washer. Okay, so the washer, and then the nut, and then the cotter pin. So we're taking all that stuff off. We're going to clean that stuff up. All of these things that uh, we're taking off here, this cap, the cotter pin, washer, nut, well, the cotter pin nut, where's where we're going to replace it. But uh, we're going to clean those up so it'll be nice and clean when we put everything back together. Okay, so now that we've got those off, this whole wheel is going to come off. Now, this wheel has two bearings in it. There's a bearing in the front and then there's a bearing in the back. So when I pull this wheel off, that bearing in the front will probably just kind of fall out. Or, there it goes. Okay. So this is that front bearing. Uh, you know, it's definitely dirty. Seen better days, but it's not, it's not awful. We'll clean that up a little later on and take a closer look at it. But let's talk about this spindle a little bit. Clean that off. Now your trailer may or may not have this particular type of a spindle. But this spindle right here, as you see, it has the grease zerk right here. So that's where you you squirt the grease in, okay? What that does is that pushes grease all the way through the spindle and it comes out of a little hole that's right there, okay? And we'll show that to you later on when, when we put the new bearings back on. But it comes through that whole hole right there and there is a seal that's on the back of, uh, of the wheel that we'll show you later. So that, that keeps the oil from going out the back. So when that grease comes through that little hole, it forces it back towards the front. It forces it back towards the front through the bearings and that keeps, that's what keeps grease into the bearings. So before you put all of this back together, you wanna to make sure that that process is still working. We're gonna squirt a little grease through there and make sure that it's still coming out that hole so we know that that's working the way it's supposed to be. But for right now, we've got the wheel off. The front bearing already came out. What we need to do now is get the seal on the back off, get the back bearing off, and then we have to get both of the races out and replace the races. At that point, we put everything back together. We obviously lube it up really good. Put everything back together and put the wheel back on. So, let's go do that. Okay, we've got the uh, wheel over here uh, to the workbench. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this seal out. There's a seal uh, right here on the back. Um, when you see that there's oil splattered along the uh, inside of the wheel there on the back side, that's an indication that uh, the seal probably has been leaking. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's good that we're, we're going in here and doing this. But again, the, the bearings weren't on the verge of failing, but uh, that's an indication that something needed to be done. So. 
we are going to just slowly work our way around and see if we can get this seal worked out. I think I'm going to need something a little shorter here. There we go. That is our old bearing seal. Now, one of the questions that you might have is how do I know exactly which seals, which bearings that uh, I need? Um, and what you will see, and I may have to wait till I get all this cleaned up to show you, but these are all cleaned up here. There is a part number, okay? So, yeah, there's a, there's a little part number on there. Um, I'm going to get these cleaned up, and once I get these cleaned up, I'll, I'll show a, a closer view where you can see what I'm talking about. But uh, there's a little part number there. That's how you know which seal that this thing actually takes. Uh, and the same thing on the bearing. So when I pull this bearing out, I'll show you the same thing on the bearing. Here is our bearing. Remember I said things are gonna get messy? This is what I'm talking about. So, again, you might be able to see that. There is a part number right there on that bearing. I'm not sure how the light's showing up in the camera, but that's how you know what bearing. Now, the other way is if you happen to know the size of your spindle on your trailer, Uh, you can find out that way as well. If you know exactly what the diameter of the spindle is on the trailer, you can make sure you're getting a bearing set that fits that particular diameter. Uh, but I like to use the part number. That's definitely a lot more accurate. <clears throat> okay, so now... We've got the front bearing out, the back bearing out. Uh, we do need to take the races out, but before we do that, there's a whole lot of grease in there that we need to get rid of. So we're gonna just take our rags. And just start getting that stuff out. Just keep in mind, in addition to getting this leftover grease out of there, you're getting dirt out of there because there's a lot of dirt and potentially moisture um, in that grease. So as you're putting these new bearings in here, you want them to have the best chance uh, they can get. So you want to give them as clean of an environment to start out with as you can. So you want to get all that stuff out of there. And this is where all of these rags come in. Maybe you can take it and look at that big glob of grease right there. I'm just going to take this and push it all the way through. It gets all that out. Now, at least we've gotten it cleaned out enough to where we can get the races out. Now, these right here, this is the race. This is basically, they call it a race because literally this is what the bearings and the, uh, the, 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 the little the rollers, if you will, the little balls, roll around in. They race around in that race. 
And that, of course, is ultra smooth to make sure that the bearing lasts as long as it can. We want to replace that as well. Um, we don't want to put new bearings in there and still have the old races. So the way we're going to do that, and there's one on each side. The way we're going to do that is we are going to use our punch. Okay, so we're going to use our punch. The first thing we're going to do is the race that is on this side, we're going to knock that out. Okay, now to make sure that we have some place for it to drop, I'm just going to take this block and put it under the tire. So there's actually some space between the center of the hub and my workbench so that I can knock it out and have it drop out on the other side. So what we're doing, here we go. So we're gonna we're take our punch, take our hammer, and we're putting it, putting the punch right there at the edge of the race that's on the other side. And what we're gonna do this, we're gonna tap, 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 and we're gonna do this all around. Tap a little bit over here, tap a little bit over here, tap a little bit over here, tap a little bit over here. Keep doing that and that race will start moving down, start moving down. And eventually, it will drop out the other side. It does take a little patience. It does not happen right away. So we're going to keep doing that. And periodically, we'll check to make sure that we actually do have some progress. And as we can see there, it is definitely moving. That's what we want. All 
right. That one has come out. So all we have to do now is flip over and do the other side. And that'll be done in the same exact way. Okay, we have gotten the races out of both sides. So before we put the new races in, we're gonna clean it up again one more time just to make sure we've gotten everything out of there. Um, there definitely could be some metal chips still left in there from us getting the races out. So we definitely don't want that to remain. Good time to hit it with some solvent or brake cleaner, whatever, and wipe it out really good. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, Let's get this off back of here too. Okay, so we're going to start with the back side. It's really important that you remember or take note which side is the outside and which side is the inside because both sides are going to get a seal, oh, excuse me, both sides are going to get a, a bearing race, both sides are going to get a bearing, but only the inside gets the seal. You don't want to put the seal on the wrong side. So, the first thing we're going to do is put the uh, race in. So, let me take one of my bearing races. And this is where this kit comes in handy as well. Put the race right on top here. I believe it's this one. I find the right size installer. That is the one I'm looking for. I get my handle. And trust me, this is a lot easier than taking them out. Put it on my handle. Now I'm using the beveled side here because of course the bearing race itself is beveled. Now this thing is designed to install the bearing race properly, to seat it properly, without actually damaging the race itself. You wanna make sure that as you're putting it in there, you don't scratch it or damage it because that's gonna screw up your bearings. So once I get the right size fitting on here, I set my bearing race right on top, put this in here, and then It's almost like when you're driving a nail, as soon as it hits bottom, it sounds different and it feels different. So that lets you know that you've driven it all the way and you're good to go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Same exact way. I've already cleaned it out and everything. Put it right here on top. Put my tool. Make sure I got it right there. Let me tighten this up again. And we'll drive it home.
Bingo. So our races are now in, good to go. We'll flip it back over to the back side. This is where I'm gonna put some gloves on. I really could have done this earlier, but I have a habit of working on stuff without putting my gloves on. So, but in this particular case, I'm gonna do that because I'm definitely getting some grease on my hands here. Not that I haven't before. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna get a nice coating of grease inside there. I'm gonna wipe that out one more time. Okay, we're gonna get a nice coating of grease inside there. I'm just gonna put some grease in my palm here. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that those bearings, not the bearings, but the bearing race, it's got plenty on it. Now, remember that system I told you that I have on the spindle of my trailer where you can pump the grease in the Greek zir grease zerk on the outside and it shoves it all the way through the spindle and comes out the back? That's actually designed to automatically pack the bearings. And that's great, but I still like to do it the old school way. I still like to make sure that my bearings have plenty of grease on them before I put them back in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put a bunch of this grease in my hand here. Now to do that, of course, you obviously want to make sure that you've got grease all over the uh, outside of the bearings here, but you also want to get it in through the little nooks and crannies here as well as there. So to do this, I'm going to just shove it in that way. And while the grease is in my hand, spin this bearing around and push that grease up into that little seam that's on the bottom, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing for that seam that's on the top. I'm just gonna push that grease up in there as I spin this bearing around. Get as much up in there as you can. And of course, I'll get plenty on the outside as well. So, once I've done all that, then I'll drop my bearing in there. And of course, never hurts, put a little bit more grease in there. Now, this is the back side of the wheel. So, this is where we need to install the seal. Okay, so this is our seal. This is our brand new seal right here. So this, you know, notice there's an open side and then there's a flat side. The open side goes in, the flat side stays on the outside. And this is where this little tool comes in handy as well, except I'm gonna flip it over. Actually, I'm gonna use a larger size. I'll use the next one larger, but I'll flip it over so the flat side will be facing down. And this is simply designed to push that seal in Boom. Again, without damaging it. So now that side is done.
flip over to this side. Now we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to put plenty of grease in there. As a matter of fact, this grease that I saved. Put that in there. The same way we did. There we go. Now, we're not gonna put that bearing in while the tire is here. That's one of the last things that we're gonna do once we put the tire back on the spindle. But there's a couple of things that we need to do with the spindle before we get there. So, let's go do that. Okay, so what I've done so far, I went ahead and cleaned the parts, uh, the, the parts that I'm gonna be putting back on that I took off from before. So my, my cap here, my nut, washer, I do have a new cotter pin as well. I have already repacked uh, the bearing for the front side, so we're all ready to put this back together. I'm going to do one last little cleaning of the spindle using some brake cleaner. Wipe that off real good. And I also want to test to make sure that when I put grease in, that grease zerk there in the front, that it actually is going to come out this little hole right here. Because if it doesn't, that means our lubrication system isn't working. We don't want that. So I'm going to squirt. Oh yeah, instantly, first squirt. I've got grease coming out here. So I know we are good to go with that as well. So, we are ready to put things back together. So we are going to go ahead and hang the wheel back on there. And notice it kind of hangs kind of funky until we get this front bearing in that front bearing in there there we go we also have a washer and a nut that needs to be put on Now, let's remember, this nut, the objective is not to crank it down. It's not supposed to be like super tight. It just needs to hold things where they are. So what we're gonna do is, we'll try right about there. And let's see if we can get our cotter pin to go in. Now, if we can't, as a matter of fact, I might have turned it a little too much. I'm gonna loosen it just a tad. See if I can line up that cotter pin hole. I know it was up there somewhere. is that cotter pin is what is going to ensure that that bolt doesn't unscrew and come back out. So once we get it through, we of course have to bend it up so it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. <coughs> now, 
The last thing that we have to do, we can actually put this on now where I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put this on just yet because uh, I wanna be able to see when I have a little bit of grease coming through here. So, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start pumping grease into that spindle so it can come out the backside and make its way forward again. Now keep in mind, there's only one little hole in the back where that grease is gonna come out. So I don't want it all to come out in one spot on the bearings. I want it to kind of distribute. So as I pump this, I'm just gonna turn the tire. So it gets a chance to distribute itself throughout Now what we'll do is we'll put this cap back on. Get this hammer and tap, tap, tap. Now if you don't have one of these hammers, a block of wood with a regular hammer would work. You don't want to hit this directly with a steel hammer because you can end up bending something there. There we go. Now, oh, nice and smooth. I like it. And no play. It's a little bit of play there, but not a lot. But that does sound like it's not quite as smooth as it should be. So this is our right wheel after putting the new bearings on. There is no play whatsoever. And you can barely hear that. There's no roaring, no rumbling, nothing like that. This is good to go. Okay, so the bearings on the bottom, that's from the left wheel. So that right there that right there. This bearing is definitely showing a little bit of wear. This one is actually in great, great, great shape. Um, the races, yeah, a little bit in there, but not real bad shape. Uh, this race actually looks uh, a lot better. But these bearings are from the right wheel, and yeah, they were pretty bad. There's a lot of pitting. They don't feel nearly as smooth. This is the wheel. The right wheel uh, was the one where the seal had clearly failed. And that's why these bearings are worse. Um, look at the, in this, the race, you can see there's lots of pitting in there. This was also the one that I could hear it when before I changed that bearing out. I could actually hear uh, it was kind of rough, and that's the reason why. So my guess is, had I not changed these, this right wheel eventually would have failed. I don't know another six months or whatever. It's kind of hard to say. You never you never know. Uh, the, the left wheel, it probably would have lasted a little while longer, but, uh, it wasn't in, in really that bad a shape, but I'm glad I did it. So as you can see, it's not really that hard to change out the bearings in your trailer. There is, however, an alternative. You can just replace the entire hub on each side. It does take a lot less time, but it is more expensive. Probably three times the cost. 
The bearing package that I got, I think was somewhere around 20 bucks. The uh, hub kit uh, is probably $35, maybe $40 per side. So you're talking $20 versus $75, $80. So decide which one you wanna do. Either way, I always carry a spare hub with me because if something does happen on the road, if for some reason my bearings go, I have a failure, I don't wanna do what we just did out on the middle of the highway. I'm not gonna have all those tools with me, but I will have the tools that I need to replace the hub. So I do always carry a spare hub with me just in case of an emergency. Anyway, I hope this has really helped you. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Share it with anybody that you feel that might uh, enjoy it or might learn something from it. And until next time, happy riding.